For my 2020 multimedia magic work, I chose to create a 4 minute 2D animated film. While there were elements of 3D in traditional animation, I mainly used 2D cell animation in Adobe Animate. To construct one shot, the one you're seeing here, I had to go through a long and tedious process that I will summarize thus. Before I even started the shot, I wrote the script to organize the story and drew up an animatic and then storyboard to plan out how the script would look visually. First thing I do for complex motions like this one, draw up a rough plan, like my animatic, but with way more frames. This way I can get a sense of the movement and timing. That said, for simple motions, like a turn of a head or a line of dialogue, I skip this step. Now usually I would go straight ahead into animating the 2D elements of the shot, but this particular one has a 3D motorbike in it which needs to be dealt with first. I open up my rough plan in Blender and use it as a guide to animate the bike on top. We'll come back to Blender later. I'm not going to talk about 2D animation after this, so buckle up. After adding the bike, I draw only the keyframes, just the most important poses that illustrate the main parts of the motion. After this comes extremes, the farthest the character will go in any one motion, and then all the frames to fill in the gaps, in-betweens. After each of these increments, I always play back the motion and adjust the timing. Sometimes when I get lost, I record a video of myself as a reference. But I have to give credit to Richard Williams' incredible book, The Animator's Survival Kit, without which I would have been utterly clueless. After the animation is done, the really hard part begins. After animation comes backgrounds. This would be easy if I was a half-decent artist, but naturally I struggled immensely. More than anything else, I start with another sketch in Photoshop. For shots with camera movement, like this other one, I created a canvas a lot longer than the 16x9 aspect ratio of my film, so that the camera can pan and layers can parallax. After a few failed attempts at backgrounds, I stuck to a small range of colours to keep everything cohesive, and ended up creating backgrounds that I was actually proud of. For this particular one, thankfully, there was no camera movement, so I imported a still from the plan and used it to create this background. Finally, compositing. I import the 2D and 3D animation as PG sequences and arrange them to play neatly. Then I add lighting to the 2D frames to try and distract from my mediocre art skills. I duplicate the 2D comp and create a solid in between them in a light color. Then I mask the solid to only cover half the frame and feather that out a ton. Then I use an alpha track mat to mask it to the animation layer above and make the blending mode overlay. It's complicated, but it looks nice. Then I duplicate the 2D comp yet again, blur it a ton, lower the opacity, and make the blending mode darken. This adds some diffusion and looks pretty retro. And I drop this whole thing into Adobe Premiere via dynamic link and add the background, audio, edit the timing, etc. Circling back to Blender for a bit, this project was my first time ever tackling 3D modeling, so naturally the bike I ended up creating was, for lack of a better word, a bit janky. However, it was not nearly as janky in the end as my first practice attempt at 3D modeling, this terrible car made out of dented tin foil. Anyway, once I'd watched enough Blender tutorials to give Lynda.com, Skillshare, and every Blender tutorial YouTuber who smudged to sneeze at their webcam each a run for their money, I ended up with this barely passable cafe racer. This is when, tear-stained and emotionally scarred, I called it quits. I did not enjoy my brush with 3D modeling, but 3D animation wasn't quite as traumatic. I found it a lot less challenging because of its technical similarities to keyframe animation, as in Adobe Animate, Premiere, and After Effects, which I'm already quite familiar with. Using my 2D animatic as a guide, as I explained previously, I animated my bike over the top. And what would you know? Doesn't look so bad, does it? In order to create the traditional animation, I needed something called a pegboard, or at least something similar. A flat drawing board with small holders through which to place a paper stack with cutout holes. This stops the paper from moving around and also allows for flipping. I also wanted this pegboard to be able to light up, and not having the funds necessary for an actual pegboard, I purchased a cheap light pad online and endeavoured to make the damn thing myself. Also, I wanted the marks. In my portfolio, I already outlined extensively the process of building the pegboard, but I'm going to use some of the footage I took to explain how some of the features impacted the final design. After making several prototypes to figure out what groove height and frame size fit the pad, the frame fits the pad almost perfectly while still allowing for easy sliding in and out. Since the light pad has a cable on the side, I chiseled this notch to allow it to sit within the frame. The holes are intentionally slightly larger than the dowel pieces to allow easier sliding in and out for both the pegs and the paper, as I'm doing here. And since both holes are the same size, the movement is uniform, so the pages don't miss a line. The board itself is large and has rounded edges for my hands, so it's really nice to use. And the light pad has three brightness settings, so I can adjust according to how many pieces of paper I have on it. When animating, I start by sketching in pencil and taking photos to test how it looks. I use Premiere to import the frames and resize them, and also weigh up the contrast so I can actually see. Then I number my pages and make any edits I need to. When I'm happy with the motion, I use a regular black pen to draw the lines and a red marker to add colour. Part of me definitely wanted to use more colours and markers, but this way I don't have to draw super complex stuff in every frame, and I can just focus on making the animation really good. 
I do the compositing for my traditional shots straight in Premiere because it's so simple. I import my images and use the speed and duration settings to make them all about two frames long and add color correction. Sometimes the white balance of certain frames will be off, so I can just use the temperature to fix that. To me, using After Effects for this would be sort of like using a circular saw to cut a pizza, if that makes sense. Anyway, this is the final shot before and after color correction. Thanks for watching.